Trey Lorenz, most famous for his background work with Mariah Carey, possesses an almost three and a half octave range and is a formidable artist of his own. But what happened to his budding solo career? Trey, a young man from Florence, South Carolina. It's also the home of the what? Fish sandwich. We were the first people to put it between bread. <laughs> was a marketing major at Farley Dickinson University. He was singing in a short-lived group called Squeak in the Deep when he met Miss Carey. Well, the way I first met Mariah, when um, they had broken up, one of the guys in the group, Patrick McMillan, had a session for what he says, a white girl that sounds like Whitney Houston. So I was like, I love Whitney Houston. I was like, okay, cool, let me go. So when I got there, you know, I saw, you know, we got to know each other and, um, we kind of just clicked from there. Mariah really took to Trey and noticed his voice breaking through the rest of the background vocalists during the sessions for There's Got to Be a Way. Patrick McMillan introduced me to Trey like two years ago when I was doing my first album. And I was singing a song called There's Gotta Be a Way in the studio. And um, we were actually mixing the record and I kept hearing this guy singing the high notes. And I'm like, where's that coming from? I know I didn't sing that particular note and it was him. Trey would go on to work in Mariah's all male background trio during the debut in Emotion album eras. So he kept singing back up for me, working on my Emotions album. And then we went to Europe for appearances. Then last summer, I was doing a rehearsal for a showcase at the Club Tattoo, and I had him sing for a couple people at the label. Acapella, just riffing and ad-libbing, and that was it. Trey would continue singing backup for Mariah at her MTV Unplugged in 1992. This performance would change the immediate course of Trey's career. The last minute edition of I'll Be There to the Set was a choice made under pressure from the MTV producers to do a remake. This would garner Mariah's sixth number one single on the Billboard Hot 100 and Trey's first. This surprise success of I'll Be There would lead to his first Grammy nomination and a record deal with Epic, brokered by Tommy Mottola, the head of Mariah's parent label. I really didn't want all the fun and interest behind him with the I'll Be There record to go to waste. So we just went at it for about three months, worked really hard, and made this. I'll Be There was released in May of 1992. Trey Lorenz, the debut album, would be written, recorded, and released in September of 1992. The album would produce the top 20 single, Someone to Hold, penned by Carrie and Lorenz, which then peaked at number 19 and 5 on the pop and R&B charts, respectively. However, the initial success of the single did not translate to album sales. It stalled at number 111 on the Billboard 200, and Trey would be subsequently dropped from the label. Coincidentally, the B-side of the lead single was Wanna Girl, which was released by Jeremy Jordan less than a year later in 1993. It attained international success, becoming a top 40 hit in several countries. The arrangement is identical to Trey's and retained much of his original vocals on the track. This led Jordan's debut album to sell over 400,000 copies that year. Trey's debut fell victim to poor promotion. But let's take a look at the album's single choice. Someone to Hold as the lead single, Photograph of Mary as the follow-up, and Just to Be Close to You as the final. Photograph of Mary takes too much of the same generic R&B approach that Someone to Hold does. Something more danceable and upbeat should have taken its spot, such as Run Back to Me, the standout vocal of the album. Let me just say, Trey decimated that track. Run Back to Me? He was in his Celine Dion bag, baby. That. Or promoting Wanna Girl as an actual single instead of a B-side. Those up-tempo tracks would have been a potential hit in the clubs, which was an essential market because having a hit on the dance or the house charts would have easily opened the door to a broader pop audience, which would have translated to sales. Just to be close to you, a cover from the Commodores is another vocal standout moment on the album. I actually think it made perfect sense to release this as the third single to push Trey towards the R&B audience. If there had been a promotional performance of this song at, say, the Apollo 
or the Arsenio Hall show, this might have garnered a better response to it on the charts. Furthermore, including maybe I'll Be There on the album as a bonus track or just to close out the album, might have further boosted the sales. It was only released four months prior to the album's debut. Despite the underperformance of the album, Trey seemed to be at least initially in talks to do another album. Because now he's, he's doing one of his own solo career as well. Right, he's working on a new album right now and he's really excited about that. And uh, he's going to be singing with me um, on my tour. Um, However, there's almost no mention of new music from Trey in at least the form of an album until about 1998 in an interview with Mariah. I want you to rush out and give Mariah the new number one's album. Which and Trey's be album, which is On The Way. That's right. Which he's working on, which one of my favorite songs is called Pisces. Pisces. And um, you really need to check that one on out. Exactly. Check it out. Always in my favorite. Always. But in the meantime, <laughs> November 17th is coming up sooner. Mm -hmm. So go out and get it. That song wouldn't see a release in the 90s. It wouldn't come until about 2006 when Trey released Mimi Presents Trey Lorenz, Mr. Mister. It was a 10-song EP released under Mariah's former label, Monarch. Trey still had a very active career in the 90s. He continued to tour with Mariah. He provided background vocals, production, and songwriting for several successful artists like Selena, Usher, Michael Bolton, and more. Here's some Trey Lorenz compositions or co-compositions you may know. Here We Go Again from Aretha Franklin's A Rose It's Still a Rose album. If You Go Away by the New Kids on the Block. He also co-wrote with Mariah Cry Baby for the Rainbow album, Subtle Invitation for the John Bracelet album, and the Japanese bonus track There Goes My Heart. Trey would also perform for a couple soundtracks during the 90s. Still Not Over You for the Money Train soundtrack in 1995 and Make You Happy featuring Mariah Carey prominently on the background vocals for the 1997 soundtrack Men in Black, which would go on to sell 3 million copies. In his later career, Trey would still go on to sporadically release music. A gospel project was teased around the early 2010s, yet it never came to fruition. Trey can still be seen performing with Mariah on her tours all over the world, and at 53, the range is still intact. Oh, 